Hello and welcome to the Gary Dunn Show for October 4th, 2022. My name is Gary Smith and I'm joined, as always, on this beautiful Tuesday morning by California's head football coach, Gary Dunn. And coach, uh, another fantastic weekend for the Vulcans this Saturday. Uh, you guys traveled up to Clarion on their homecoming and... Um, you know, we're sitting here smiling on, uh, on three days later, four days later. Yeah, good weekend. Uh, I thought the guys handled the, the trip really well. Uh, we, I don't know that we started as, as well as we wanted to coming out of the locker room, but give Clarion credit. They had a good plan and, and, and made some plays early and was proud of the way our guys responded. You know, it, it, you know there was a, a situation or a deal there in the first quarter where, you know, they had all the momentum and our guys responded and we made some plays and then kind of got rolling throughout the afternoon. But give Clarion credit because they came out and, and, and jumped on us early. And going back just a little bit before the, the start of the game, I wanted to ask the question, you know, was their, their homecoming this week or this past weekend, um, is that any difficult, any, any, ch any change in the game plan, just knowing that they're going to be a little bit more rammed up any time yeah, you play no, some another homecoming? You know, the, the, all that homecoming stuff's before the kickoff. Once the kickoff, it's, it's a normal game. So our guys really don't feel it, you know, and, and, and as coaches, we don't either. But, you know, obviously, Clarion came out ready to play and, and, and scored first and took an early lead. They said they scored first. It was seven nothing, and then I'm going to borrow a phrase from uh, the Sweet Science of Boxing. Uh, your team started having punches and bunches, and even though you only held the, held the ball for about nine minutes in the first half, 35 points. Uh, it was just quick, and uh, it was awesome to watch as a California fan just to see your team, offense, defense, special teams after that first quarter, just basically like a freight train rolling down the hill. Yeah, really weird. Really weird first quarter. You know, we I think we only ran eight plays in the first quarter. We got to a third and one and didn't get it and had to punt it. We we had a bad punt at, at that situation, but at halftime we had only ran 23 plays offensively. Now I'll give our credit, give our defense credit that you know they they created some turnovers, they blocked a punt, but we never felt like we could get into a flow offensively because we only ran 23 plays in the first half. Um, we felt like our plan was right, and, and in the second half I thought we played better. I challenged the team to. You know, our, the, the score zero zero at halftime. We've got to come out of the locker room ready to play, and and I thought we did that. I think the the first series, of the second half, we went down and, and got a field goal, um, which anytime we can put points on the board, we're happy with it. Uh, and and just kind of a kind of a weird game. We blocked a couple punts, and, and unfortunately for for Clarion, I think their long snapper was hurt, and they had a backup long snapper in there. And and anytime your your operations change that much, it, it you know it's tough to overcome that. But our guys did a good job. You know, the one the late block punt we had, we were in. Punt safe and our kids you know we teach our kids to turn the scoreboard off and, and we're really not worried about score every play that we're out there we're going to play extremely hard you know funny Gabe Miller comes off the edge going full speed blocks a punt right to his little brother uh, who picks it up and runs it for a touchdown so I know that was a great great deal the great memory they'll have for their family for, for a long time yeah when our announcer said the names like wait that is that that might be history because who knows if that's ever happened here before yeah. but um, like you said, the special teams in the defense you had two interceptions. One went back for a pick six. One went back to the three yard line. One punt block uh, had you guys set up inside or near the red zone. The other one you went for the touchdown. And then uh, you referenced coming out of the locker room, and it was nice to see because you see see it every week. Team with a big lead comes out, maybe let down a little bit, but uh, that your foot was firmly down on the uh, the accelerator. Yeah, I challenged our guys. You got to be able to come out of the locker room and, and and really, you know, in football, a big thing is that that last possession before the first half and the first possession of the second half. You know, and so I challenged the guys. We got to come out ready to play because I didn't know that we necessarily did that in the first quarter, and, and they responded and, and did a great job. And you know, defense. You know, kind of kept their foot on the gas a little bit. But the great thing was we were able to play a lot of young guys. We got a lot of guys reps uh, the whole maybe midway through the third quarter um, and then all of the fourth quarter. So that's going to pay off for us. We got a lot of guys experience. I was, you know, I was happy with our offense. When, when the defense sets you up or special teams set you up in the red zone, you've got to take advantage of it. And, and we did each time we were down there. So that was a, you know, a bright side for the offense, especially in the first half. You know, when you get a, get a turnover down there, you got to – you, you got to cash those into touchdowns, and we were able to do that. Well, as a coaching staff, I know obviously the way the first half went, you said only ran 23 plays, but a lot of that's because you were inside the 20-yard line. As a coaching staff, would you like to have one or two drives a little longer, just even if they don't turn out to, for points? No, just I'd, love just to start, I'd love to start inside <laughs> the 10-yard line every every drive. Okay. Uh, you know, field possession's a, a big thing. We talked to our – you know, our kickoff team this week, Coach Craig, uh, Jacob Craig's doing a great job with our special teams. And, you know, one of the stats that he shared with the team this past week was 
when the offense starts inside the 25 yard line, uh, the negative 25, they haven't scored on us. So, you know, obviously field position is a huge deal. And I thought our kickoff team did a really good job. You know, they, they've got some dangerous returners. They were averaging, you know, really good field position. And I thought our kickoff team, you know, improved from a week from the from the Edinburgh game and really set our defense up for them to have to drive long fields and then when you know when you give our offense short fields you know we've got to take advantage of those and I thought our red zone plan was good I think Jaquay Jackson ended up having three touchdowns two receiving and in one rushing um, so you know we got to continue to develop down in the red zone. I know it was about a minute left in the first quarter or the first half and I just happened to look to the right and I'm like I haven't seen this side of the field uh, in a while, because all the action was down to the uh, the scoreboard end of the field. But you mentioned Jaquay Jackson had another fantastic afternoon. Uh, seven receptions, 170 yards, three touchdowns. But, I mean, your offense spread the ball out to about nine different receivers. Noah Mitchell, once again, uh, 15 for 20, very efficient, 267 yards, three touchdowns. And uh, second half, just threw a bomb down the right sideline for a touchdown. Yeah, they were playing, you know, coverage uh, in single and Jaquay up, and we feel great about any matchup there. But... You know, I think some of our other guys are continue to grow and develop, you know, and, and continue to to come along. You know, we've got to have other receivers making plays, and we did Saturday, and that's the big thing. We've got to be able to distribute the ball evenly and make them de defend all the eligibles. I thought our running game was good uh, for the most part. We didn't have a ton of carries. We ran three running backs, and, you know, i got to give those guys credit. They're, they're being really unselfish right now. We've, we feel like we've got three good running backs, and we're able to keep guys fresh. You know, you don't want a guy – you know, I'm sure they all want 20 to 30 carries a game, uh, but they're all fresh. You know, Malik was banged up with an injury earlier in the year, and he's healthy now. Uh, Eric McCann is, is doing a really good job. And then Devontae, every time he gets in, he's, he's making some runs. So, you know, we're going to continue to rotate those guys, and whoever has the hot hand will go with them. He has a team 29 carries, 119 yards, three touchdowns. But it's a little misleading because, as we talked about, you know, for the first – First uh, half of the game, or the second, or the second quarter, first half of the game, whatever you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Second quarter, you had great field position, so there wasn't a yard, lot of yardage to be gained. And on the defensive side, once again, your defense was in the backfield all day. Uh, you know, I, I, a lot of guys, multiple tackles. Matt Toby, No Dilla, once again, two picks. Uh, Tayon Lobin uh, had eight tackles, but you know, you got you had guys in the backfield all day, which. As we talked about last week, that's tough to do on that offense because that's such a different offense than everybody else in the league plays. Yeah, they, they do a nice job offensively of, of a lot of jet sweeps, and they'll, they'll hand it to anybody. The quarterback ran typically more the, the weeks before than they did against us. Uh, but whether you're defending the tailback, the wide receiver on the jet, you know, the, the H-back on the, on the shuffle pass, it's, it's hard to defend that. I thought our defensive line played well and kind of controlled the line of scrimmage. And then Matt Toby and, and, and Dillo both with interceptions. And, and I think – you know, what we teach our guys is, is you work hard and you play hard and opportunities come to you. And both of those were, were plays that where those guys were in the right spot and the opportunity came to, for them to make a play. Noah made a nice play and got underneath the route there. And then Toby in the backfield. And Toby plays as hard as anybody. Um, so to see him, him be able to make a play. And I thought Gerald Brown intercepted it. And, and one of the guy, coaches up in the box said, you know, he pitched it to Toby. So I pulled Gerald aside. We don't pitch interceptions. We keep interceptions and we run. And get, he said, Coach, I didn't have it. I, I didn't pitch it. I, could, I didn't catch it. But he kind of tipped it to Toby, and that, that was a good play for us. Yeah, I think because we had the same uh, conversation in the box. So I, I think he just took it out of the hands and was like, this yeah. is my ball. And I went back to back. But, again, you know, uh, interception-wise uh, and, and punt block-wise, it's always great to see that your team – turn around and get ready to block, and it's just well coached? Yeah, well, John Hutchinson uh, blocked the first punt, mm -hmm. and, and he's another guy. He's really a hard worker. He wins every one of our sprints, and it, it's fun to watch him, Toby, and Dillo compete at practice when we're conditioning. Um, so I was glad to see him, you know, to be able to make a play and, and get rewarded for his effort. He's going to continue to play more and more for us on defense, and he's doing a nice job. It was a great splash play, and let's take a look at a bunch of splash plays from this past Saturday's action up at Clarion, California getting the win on the road, and after the break, we'll be back to talk about this upcoming week's opponent, the IEP Crimson Hawks. You're watching The Gary Dunn Show right here on CTV. Mitchell rolling to his right, trying to find the receiver in the end zone. Touchdown, Vulcans. Jaquay Jackson on the reception. Well done, roll to his left, look, looking for He's going to get picked off by Dillo. Dillo, where he's been down the field, is going to be like last week. Dillo going to be brought down just shy. It's going to fake the handoff, pitch it over to Jackson. Jackson strides on in, untouched in the end zone for the touchdown. 
And the Vulcans able to block it. Number 31 for the Vulcans able to block it. With the fast huddle, is going to hand it off to McCann. McCann untouched into the end zone for the Vulcan touchdown. And the shotgun. The fire toward the end zone. Touchdown. Who else but Jaquade Jackson once again for the Vulcans. Three touchdowns. Snap. Biko's kick is up. And Biko's kick is good. Mitchell gets the snap, looking to fire deep down the field, has Jaquay Jackson wide open. Jackson catches it at the 25, and Jaquay Jackson is gone for the Vulcan touchdown. It's Esposito's punt gets blocked once again, and here comes Gabe Miller. Miller is going to go untouched into the end zone. Touchdown Vulcans. Hurt. Gets the high snap, able to bring it down, hands it off to Williams. Williams able to break this one out to the outside. Gets it blocked by Harper. Williams going to go untouched into the end zone. Touchdown, Vulcans. State Screen Park returns September 9th. Get your tickets now at hauntedhillsestate.com. Steps back in the pocket, firing, and it is brought in, hauled in by Tarrant. Dropping back, Woodbury firing down the middle, and it's caught by Keisha Carter, and the Crimson Hawks strike back. Quick pass, again to the same target, and this time he doesn't miss as that's Irvin Charles bringing it in for the Crimson Hawk touchdown. Mitchell takes the snap, steps up in the pocket, firing deep for Derek Lockhart, and he brings it in for the Cal U touchdown, Derek Lockhart. The hurt, airing it out to the back of the end zone. It's caught, it is caught, Cal U gets a touchdown, and who else is it other than Cam Tarrant? Mitchell, flag is thrown deep in the end zone, and it's caught! Touchdown, Cal U, it's Derek Lockhart. And they are gonna punt this one away. It was blocked by Cal U. It was picked up immediately. And what a play by Cal U as that's he blocked the punt. That's number 28. Jacob Siegel. The snap. Mitchell to Hill. And it's caught. Touchdown. It's caught. Tyson Hill. Tyson, Tyson Hill brings it in for the Cal U touchdown. And the oh Falcons are boy. in there on the sidelines. What a quiet IUP crowd as Tyson Hill brings in the touchdown. Woodbury back in the pocket, firing deep downfield. 2-1. It's intercepted. intercepted. It's intercepted by Jamal, Jamal Jr. Martin. Jamal Martin Jr. He's taking it in IUP territory. He's still going. And he's finally brought down. And your winners at the 12th annual Cobol are the Cal U Vulcans. And they storm Miller Field. And welcome back to the Gary Dunn Show. Once again, I'm Gary Smith along with Coach Dunn, and we looked at this past weekend's uh, action against Clarion. And, uh, Coach, the calendar once again turns over, and uh, it's a big one this week. Uh, the beginning of the season or the beginning of the summer, the schedule comes out. This is historically a game that fans always circle. It's a Cal IEP game. It's a rivalry game. Um, and it's, once again, like it has been for probably the last 25 years, there's a lot, of, um, there's a lot on the line. 
the biggest game because it's the next one, right? Uh, no, they got they're doing an incredible job. Obviously, they got a great program, and you know I know the fans get excited about it, but for us, it's about our preparation, it's about our details, and it's it's about us playing good. And uh, IP coming into this game ranked in the top twenty, undefeated. Uh, they held serve this past weekend against Slippy Rock at home, and it, it, the crazy thing, not the, the result, but. That game was played about an hour south, and they had, I think, uh, ten times worse weather than we did. So whatever you did, the call had yeah, to right. clear. And, I mean, it was, it was bad at times, the, but it wasn't that bad. The older I get, the, the weather seems to affect me more. I wasn't happy with our weather at Clarion. I sure wouldn't have been happy with the weather they had up there in Indiana. But, yeah, it was uh, interesting to watch. Uh, two really, really good football teams, two well-coached football teams battling it out all day and really came down to the end. And uh, as I ask all, every week, Coach, about the opponents, I know you've watched – a ton of film, and we're Tuesday, and probably watch a ton of film the rest of the day after this and all week. But uh, let's start on the offense. Um, offensively, we know IEP has a, a great receiver, but what else do they they, do? Are, they do? They're good at everything. Uh, they've got a big, experienced offensive line. Uh, they're a balanced offense, probably, you know, more so than anybody we've played so far. Um, they're running for, I think, 220 yards a game. They're throwing for 260 yards a game. I think they're averaging, my math skills aren't great right now, but like 570 a game. They got a really good tailback and really got two tailbacks. One, you know, gets more carries than the other, but but the other one's a good change of pace back. He's averaging, I think, 150, 160 yards a game. So it all starts with them with their running game. And then um, they've, they've got a, you know, returning All-American receiver that that's doing an incredible job and has a great relationship with his with his quarterback, but they also got some other guys that can hurt you, so you really can't focus on him. You know, they, they, when they need a play, they go to him, but they spread the ball around as well. So, um, you know, really, really strong offense that's doing a really good job. And we can probably say that at nauseum because, it, I mean, as good as they've been for forever, it's, you know, balance is going to win the day. But on the other side of the ball, you know, there's a reason they're undefeated. What, what, are they, what kind of schemes do they run and what are they Yeah, they're, they're – they do a nice job, probably different than, than most, of mixing up their coverages. They're a base four down front. They, they're really good up front. They got two really big kid, kids inside at the tackles. They got two good pass rushers at the defensive end. I think probably their strength is their inside linebackers. I, you know, they kind of remind me of our two guys. They work hard. They're smart. They're in right position. They don't miss tackles. Um, they're really good. And they're athletic on the back end. Um, you know, they'll start in their four, four down front. They'll, they'll mix in some man coverage, some zone coverage, and, and roll the safeties a little bit. And, and so it, it's going to be a test. You know, they've been running the same defense for years and years and years, and they do it really well. Um, you know, so they're stopping the run and they're defending the pass really well. They're really good at everything. So it's, it's you know, but the focus has got to be on us. We've got to take care of our business. We've got to, you know, I, I said it a couple of weeks ago, we've got to, you know, assign and align it and effort and, and do our job. And, you know, we'll see what happens. Now, Coach, you have a, an interesting, uh, um, not viewpoint, but a perspective on this rivalry. You played in this rivalry as a player. Let's talk about that. What, what's it, what, what is it like as a player to play in this rivalry? Yeah, and well, of course, when I was here, they had the, 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 they, they got the better of us uh, quite a bit. They were really good back in the, you know, the early 90s when I was here. I think they went to a national championship game and, and, and did a good job. But it's just, it's special, and I say it every week and every year, to play in the PSAC. Well, our guys are friends with a lot of their guys. We know their coaching staff. We recruit you know, the same circles and the same players. It's, it, it's just really good for college football, you know, and I say it every year, but, you know, West Virginia in the, in the you know, the Big 12 and Pitt in the ACC mm -hmm. playing Georgia Tech, there's no rivalries left in, in really Division One football. In Division Two, every week you're lining up against people that you know, and, and I think that's what makes it special. And, and obviously this rivalry, our fans get into it, our students get into it. We need our students here this weekend. Uh, you know, we've done a great job of, of having great home crowds, but we need our students and we need to help. I know our marching band will be there. I spoke with one of the cheerleaders this morning. Uh, it's, it's just fun for college football. Well, it's, I mean, it's a, a very, it's a big game. It's a rivalry game. And uh, I know nobody ever looks likes to look at standings, but uh, we'll look at the standings for just a second. I'll talk about them. There are three teams that are undefeated in the PSAC West right now. It's Cal, IUP, and Gannon. And then in the East, uh, Shepard's the only undefeated team. So we're getting to that part of the year. We're, the, the page is turning. We're, we're firmly in the middle, getting ready to turn to the second half of the year. So um, rivalry games and, and week to week aside is what's it like trying to keep your team on task? Because, I mean, they've been locked in for about two and a half months now. That's, yeah, that's a long time when we started the show, you said October 4th, I think. And I was yeah. like, there's no way it's October. It feels like we got here yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's part, partly the group we have. 
you know, they, they show up to work every day. They show up to meetings. I've been really pleased with, with the effort. Uh, just met with the coaching staff this week about, you know, this is about the time of year you try and start cutting practice back a little bit because obviously it is a physical game and, and, and you try and save bodies. Uh, but our guys haven't blinked. You know, we conditioned last night at practice and there wasn't a word about it. You know, it, it's okay, we condition on Mondays, let's line up, let's go to work and, and let's work to be deserving this week against IUP. So, uh, you know, it's, it's good, but you know, October, I mean, this is the time of the year where, where you know, it, it's, it's time. And I, I talk to our guys about continuing to grow. Good football teams continue to grow every week and don't get in a rut of, okay, we're just going to do a Monday practice. We're just going to do a Tuesday practice. They continue to work and grow together um, to, to improve. And our guys have done that so far. Well, and I bet if you look back at the first game, the other Fairmont game, you look at the film of that game and the film this past weekend, it's probably hard to recognize. I mean, you recognize it because your team, but just the growth from, you know, six weeks ago. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, we, we dropped a couple really close games on the road, and I think, you know, give those teams credit, but a lot of that was mistakes that we made. And if we can continue to grow and develop and, and limit those mistakes, then, then obviously we're going to be a better football team, and I've seen that the last three weeks. And this weekend, make sure you're there in uh, red and black at Adamson Stadium. Game starts at noon. Get to the parking lot around 10.30. 10. 10, 10 o'clock. Uh, uh, is perfect. Get the get the boards out. Uh, grill some hot dogs. Give some to me and coaches. We walk in on our different times. But uh, Vulcan Nation, you know, coach and the team need you to to, to really fill that pack that place, make it a home atmosphere. Uh, it's a very special place to be. Like I said, at noon on Saturday uh, in the autumn weather right now looks very good. Um, so come on out and um, cheer on the Vulcans. And if you can't make it, CTV will have you covered on CTV Sports One and the PSAC Network. But Right before we go, since I made the graphics coach, we're going to look put them up all around the PSAC. Well, first we're going to look at the uh, – just put a bow on this past weekend. We have the scoreboards here. Uh, rest of the West scores, Gannon over Seton Hill, 21-10. Edinburgh and a squeaker over Mercyhurst, 16-13. to And in the game, um, IUP, Slippery Rock, 20-12. to And then over in the East, Millersville, 42, Lockhaven, 12. Uh, Shepard gets by Shippensburg, 30-13. to uh, Quidstown over East Stroudsburg, 24-20. to Then uh, Bloomsburg uh, – Winning at home versus Westchester, 21 to 16, and once again we're in as we move on to this coming week schedule. We're in divisional play, uh, the big game IUP Cal this Saturday at noon, and then Gannon Edinburgh, Clarion going to Seton Hill, and then Mercyhurst at Slippery Rock at a six o'clock kick, and then over in the East Bloomsburg, Quitstown, East Stroudsburg's Millersville, Lockhaven, Shepherd, and Shippensburg, Westchester. And coach, we usually ask at this time. Uh, another game to watch, but there is only one game this <laughs> that's, week. That's what it's you're saying. Cal- you're not even going to ask this yeah, week. It's the Cal IEP right, game. It's uh, everywhere in the conference. So, like I said, um, come support the team. It's going to be a beautiful day. And uh, like I said, Coach, uh, even on the road this past weekend, the, the support has been there, but we just need a, just need a little just bit more. A little more. Just a little right, more. A little so. more. We've got to get our, our students to the game. Uh, you know, stay this weekend. You had fall break last weekend. Yep. You were off on Friday. So, I'm guessing your parents are sick of you being at home. Uh, they, don't, they sent you to college for a reason. They want you to stay at college. So come up to Addison Stadium, tailgate. Let's get after it at 12 yep. o'clock on Saturday. So for Coach Dunn, I'm Gary Smith. We'll see you Saturday at Addison Stadium. Uh, you're watching The Gary Dunn Show right here on CUTV.